I started playing drums when I was 15. Once I started playing, it, it didn't take long for me to realize that um, the drums and music in general was gonna kind of take over my life. There was something about jazz that grabbed me right away. You know, the first time I heard Tony Williams, my life took a turn. Um, I knew there was something in his playing and something in that music. It was predominantly his playing in Miles Davis's quintet. I had never heard music like that before. And of course, never heard drumming like that before. And it really pushed me down this path of deep immersion in, in the jazz world. And uh, I think that pursuit of that knowledge has really created the, the foundation of the way I approach music. When I sit down, I'm relying on the instrument to fill me with inspiration so that I can make the best music that I can in that moment. I think you need an instrument that can deliver exactly what you need, but also have this element of a variable where it might surprise you from time to time and actually push you in new musical directions. I really love Gretsch drums. I, I really feel at home when I'm playing Gretsch drums and I'd be lying if I said I wasn't influenced by the fact that a lot of my heroes played on Gretsch drums. Elvin Jones, Tony Williams, Art Blakey, Max Roach. I've listened to these guys all my life. To know that they found their voice on these drums is really inspiring. This is the Gretsch Broadcaster Kit, and this is in bebop sizes, so 18-inch bass drum, 12-inch rack tom, 14-inch floor tom, and I use this in a jazz context. So the drums are tuned quite high, and they're incredibly responsive, and they're new drums, but they're modeled off of the Broadcasters uh, from 50 or 60 years ago. These Brooklyn drums, I prefer to tune them a bit lower and they provide a little more body in that tuning range. So when I'm playing a little more beat oriented music, I, I turn to the Brooklyn drums. So these are all Sabian cymbals and this is the, the cymbal setup that I use with my jazz quartet. Both of these cymbals are, are custom cymbals. Uh, I had the fortune of being up at the factory and working with the guys up there, Mark Love in particular, and they're, they're so open-minded and really willing to experiment. We worked in real time to really shape the sound, and I really, really feel at home with this configuration. And these hi-hats as well, these are artisan hats. I really like quite light hi-hats, so typically the bottom hi-hat is pretty heavy in a pair of hi-hats. So what I did is I took the top hi-hat and put it on the bottom, and then we made a top hi-hat even thinner to accommodate um, the ratio that we're usually looking for, you know, between the top and the bottom. So these, these go with me everywhere. I had the incredible honor of playing on Black Star, David Bowie's final record. I can't say enough good things about this guy. He was incredibly kind, uh, incredibly generous, incredibly funny. From day one, he made it feel like we, we were old friends. And I think I could speak for the entire band when I say that. I mean, um, it was a joy to work with him and it was easy. It was so easy. Um, we just went in and it was all about the music. We were just trying to make a good record. That was it. All of these tunes had demos that David would make at home. If you were to hear these demos and compare them to the record, you could hear, wow, he really did have all of this detail in place. That being said, he was incredibly open to our own ideas. The first time David heard us was he came to one of our gigs at this small little dive bar called the 55 Bar in, in the West Village. So he heard us in our comfort zone. He heard us taking chances and exploring and taking risks and really searching for all different stuff inside the music. And I think that's one of the things that attracted him to us and the way we played together. He really wanted us to be taking chances, pushing each other. I still can't believe this record exists, you know. Um, we made it one week at a time, spread out, you know, over the course of three months. 
my life has certainly changed from that experience and I will forever be indebted to him for the opportunity. What I've learned is that over time, I just have to do the work. Just go, keep going, keep going, because um, it's not always gonna work. Not everything I write will be good. I'm always just trying to explore with no preconceptions and also with no um, expectations. The more exploration I do, the better chance I have to find some good stuff. For me, playing music creates a feeling in my body that I can't get anywhere else in life. I feel um, lucky to get to make a lot of music with musicians that I really admire and that push me and inspire me to, to play the best that I can and I hope I can give that back to them. When I'm surrounded by musicians that I really trust and admire and we're all pushing each other to, to search for the, the perfect music in that moment, it's really a feeling that um, keeps me coming back to music. <laughs>